You've asked about the ranges of, of VSS that people experience. I'm not quite sure what you mean because patients with VSS have a large number of symptoms. What we define as VSS is really a definition for the purposes of research. It was very obvious at the first meeting that we talk about visual snow as being an absolute requirement. Other things that we look for are night blindness, persistence of uh, images when we look away from them, uh, what are called bluefield entoptic phenomena, floaters, squiggly lines, little flashes of light. Um, there are a lot of associated symptoms but that are not required for the diagnosis. Photophobia is, is, is part and parcel of it. So you either have to, you have to have visual snow and two of the five other symptoms. This is an artificial construct. When we were at the meeting in San Francisco, people stood up and talked about depersonalization, derealization, uh, migratory paresthesia, pins and needles, uh, balance disorders, a whole range of symptoms. Some of them also related to anxiety and depression. I think that we're looking at a fairly generalized disorder of processing in the brain and my own impression is that this is a failure of filtering and also a failure of the inhibitory system that maintains electrical activity in the brain at a certain level so you can respond up or down. As such, various brain functions could be affected in any one patient, but they're outside the range of the visual snow syndrome, which is an artificial construct so that we all know we're studying the same thing.